It's time for Jack to let her rip! Oh, hello. I didn't notice I set up all of my lights and table and camera and tripod and I'm recording a video. This is my mega sweet Revoltec ride in action figure that I uh, got for my birthday, which is like last week or something. And uh, before we talk about this, I wanted to talk about my entire Metal Gear collection. So without any more horrible introductory skits, let's jump into it. Alright, first up we have Metal Gear for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, don't really have much to say about it other than you should probably play one of the MSX ports of Metal Gear. This is an okay game for when it came out. You don't actually get to fight a Metal Gear. It's kind of um, just kind of an obtuse game, but it's alright, you know, whatever. Um, this is Snake's Revenge, which most people shit on. It's an okay Nintendo game. Um, it's, I mean, it doesn't make a lick of sense. It's not part of the Metal Gear canon. But if you're a Metal Gear fan, you should play it. If you just like Nintendo games, you should check it out. It's not bad. Uh, I got it. It came with the uh, manual, which is hilarious. Um, the three commandos and their foxy friend Jennifer. Uh, place your name here. It's got a little area for you to write your name under uh, Solid Snake's portrait, which is interesting. AKA Solid Snake, a black belt in 32 forms of oriental combat and skilled in every weapon known to man. Your Foxhound's most lethal fighting machine. You're a combination Rambo, James Bond, John Wayne, and Lawrence of Arabia. You're also the leader of this perilous mission, and if you bite the dust, so does the free world. Um, is this where you fight? Like, what's, what's the guy's name? There's like an enemy. Um, anyway, it's like... I oh, don't know. I forget. Yeah, Colonel Vernon Katafi. And then I believe the enemy in the game is like named differently. Um, I was at a thrift shop and they had one of those generic plastic rental cases and they had cut out the uh, cardboard from the game. So I've got like 60% of the box <laughs> for uh, Snake's Revenge that I just, you know, took because fuck it, man. Um, oh yeah, okay. As nutty as ever, Katafi has sought asylum from the world's premier bad guy, Hayarola Kakamami. That's, that's the name I was looking for. So, this is my, you know, the oldest part of my Metal Gear collection, a box scrap manual to Nintendo games. Uh, Moving along to the PlayStation era, uh, this is the Pizza Hut demo, which thanks to um, one of my friends from the interwebs, uh, someone saw my YouTube collection video and I was like, I uh, commented in my earlier Metal Gear collection video that I didn't have this. Like, oh, it's on eBay, it's real cheap, and I bought two copies. I have a shrink-wrapped copy of this somewhere that I fucking lost, and I typically don't lose things, but... Uh, this is the Pizza Hut demo. I remember this back in the day. My brother had this, and I remember him talking about the tank fight. And I thought, ooh, that sounds pretty neat. And uh, eventually I got this game for Christmas. Actually, I may have uh, talked to my brother about it after I became a fan of the game. But, I don't know. My memory's fuzzy. I'm getting old and shitty. This is uh, Metal Gear Solid. This is my first exposure to the series. This is a random Christmas present. I had seen the commercials, which uh, I thought were funny. Uh, if you remember the PS1 commercial for this, um, just fuck it, you're on YouTube. Look it up, but after this video. Um, it was like the day after Christmas, and the kid across the street, Michael, came over. He's like, did you get Metal Gear Solid? I was like, well, actually, I did. How did you say, you have to play it. Let's go right now. We're playing this game. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I uh, fire this up in the PlayStation, and he's like, I mean, he's, he's fucking amped about this game. And... Uh, we play till the Ocelot fight, and he's like, alright, man, I gotta go. But he came over and got me amped on this series, and I think that was like one of the last times I ever kicked it with Michael, but he was really jazzed about this game, came over, made me play it, and then I was like, oh, holy shit. I played it all into the night, I got to the Psycho Manus fight, 
and my cheap uh, like 10,001 memory cards things like this big ugly memory card that uh, had buttons on it and you cycled through like different virtual memory cards and it had like 10 memory, I don't know it shitted out on me then I had to go bug my dad about uh, getting his memory card so that uh, I could fuck around with it so I could save it and keep playing the game and he was giving me a hard time and it was like 1 in the morning I'm like dad memory card I've been playing this game all night eh, I want to save it and go to bed and um, this was like from that point on my favorite video game until a little bit later and this was knocked out of my number one spot by the sequel Metal Gear Solid 2 um, the next thing Metal Gear Solid VR missions I didn't get this until about, you know, maybe 2006 when I started having disposable income, like my first decent adult job, and uh, could start pissing money away. I remember seeing this at Blockbuster. I'm like, oh man, Gray Fox is on the cover. Oh, I want this. Uh. But it wasn't, like, I never asked for it, you know. Uh, and I never bought it with, like, any of my first job money. But eventually I got this, and I did. I've 100 percented it. It's a really good game. Um... If you're looking to get into the original Metal Gear Solid, playing through this first will make you a fucking master of every weapon. After playing this, I uh, use the wall knock a lot more uh, to distract guards and get them to disrupt their uh, patrol routes and whatnot. I, I championed the wall, mock, wall knock maneuver after having played through this. It helps me a lot. Um, this is Metal Gear Solid Integral. This I picked up like way after I started collecting stuff. Uh, I saw this copy. It was inexpensive. This, this, some people think there's a first person mode. I've seen on Wikipedia the first person mode. And every now and then I hear people talk about the first person mode. Uh, as far as I know, this is just regular Metal Gear Solid packed with the VR mission disc. Um, that's all this is. I, I don't know anything about a first-person mode, and maybe if I could re read uh, Japanese, uh, I'd be able to figure it out with the manual, but it's all in Moon, so I don't know. Um, this has, the integral version has the American voice acting, uh, but it has the Japanese subtitles. So, if you have a modded PS1, or a Japanese PS1 or PS2, or whatever, if you can play Japanese games, um, very import friendly because it's the exact same game. It has the American dub, and uh, you know there's nothing too complicated in it to where Japanese would affect your uh, ability to enjoy the game. This is Metal Gear Solid for the PC. Um, I've loaded it on the PC and played it before. It's exactly the same as the PS1 game. It does, I believe, it does have all the VR missions. Um, yeah. I believe it does. I loaded it up once like a million years ago when I bought it. I don't have like the box that came out, so I have the jewel case and whatever. Um, maybe this is where there's a first person mode. You know, people also refer to this as Metal Gear Solid Integral because it's packaged with uh, the VR missions. But the only difference is that it uh, has a higher resolution. Also, from around that same time frame, uh, Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy Color, also called Ghost Babel, or Babel, however you pronounce that, and other regions. Here it's just called Metal Gear Solid. It's a 2D Game Boy Color game. It's one of the best uh, 2D games, in my opinion. I think it's more playable than Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. Um, yeah. Although Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 is very playable. There's a lot of backtracking in that game, but this also has an infamous box puzzle. I've never played the two-player mode. It requires a link cable, and I've only got one copy of the game. I'm contemplating picking up a second copy of this and uh, putting some video up on YouTube, but now that I've said that, someone else will do it before I do, so that sucks. This is Bleemcast Metal Gear Solid. Basically, this is a boot disc that lets you play PS1 games on your Dreamcast, um, which is pretty freaking neat. Um... Why is this a two CD set? What the hell? Um, apparently this is a two CD set case and I don't have it. Maybe that's just the jewel case someone used. Because I've used this before and uh, it does work. When you play it on the Dreamcast, uh, it's a lot smoother. Uh, everything's smoothed out, everything looks real nice, it's real sharp and clear. Kind of like playing the PC port. 
Um, it's a little weird playing Metal Gear Solid on a Dreamcast controller. I believe the uh, R2 and L2 are but, uh, mapped to the D-pad. It's been a while since I've screwed around with it. But, yeah, so... I believe this came out in 1999. I remember uh, playing this as... I think it was a freshman. I might have been a sophomore in high school. Excellent game. I still, I've only made it up to the box puzzle. I can't believe I've had this for so many years and I've never actually beaten it. Every time I sit down and try to beat it, I get to that fucking box puzzle and I get frustrated and give up. <laughs> uh, not the most hardcore of Metal Gear fans, I imagine. This is pretty cool. Um, if you got a Dreamcast, go ahead and pick this up. It's pretty freaking neato. Alright, um, if you listen to the podcast, you've heard me tell the story about how I got this for Christmas and how it's one of my favorite Christmas memories. I played this in two sittings. Um, still my favorite game of all time. I've been through it a million times. Uh, lovely classic game, Metal Gear Solid 2. This is Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance. When I bought this, I got it for like 15 bucks. And at the time, that was a pretty good deal. This was going for like maybe 30 uh, This was before the 5 billion re-releases. And uh, I had to buy a new PS2 to play this because it's on a dual-layer DVD and my PS2 Fat was having problems uh, playing this. So I bought a PS2 Slim. This was probably about 2006. Um, this is uh, the document of Metal Gear Solid 2. It's got like all the uh, source material for the game, like all the notes... Uh, you can, like, there's a 3D model viewer, you can watch cutscenes and swap out characters. I believe there's five VR missions on it, and if you have a save from this, and then load it into this, you will be able to unlock all the characters in the VR missions, instead of having to beat VR missions to unlock all the characters. Um, that's kind of neat. This is the Xbox version of Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance, which I believe came out... I think this may have came out before the PS2 version, I'm not really sure. And this is the PC version of Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance. All I have is the disc and the manual. Um, I don't have the box, so that kind of sucks. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, it's okay. Um, if you're looking to get into the Metal Gear Solid series, definitely play the PS1 version first. Uh, most people would say to emulate the PS1 version over getting the PC version if you're a PC gamer. Um, just keep that in mind. I never had any problems with Metal Gear Solid PC, but I haven't tried it on my uh, new PC, which is, you know, 64-bit, 1.7 machine, so it may have trouble on that. Metal Gear Solid 2 Substance for the PC... Um, on, an, on my old XP machine, I had to jump through a billion fucking hoops to get this to run. And uh, you had to, like, download patches and tweak it, because out of the box, it was just fucky. Um, this came out a little bit before Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. I bought a GameCube. I got the uh, Zelda Collector's Bundle Black GameCube so that I could play this. It's like 100 bucks. It's like 2003. Um, the GameCube is the first system I bought with my own money. That was pretty neat. Um, I was a little disappointed in this. The big selling point is, oh my god, so much better graphics. You get to be Solid Snake, and he, like, moves his mouth now, and it's so cool. Oh my god, I can get it. And, uh, the hair looks like shit. Like, the GameCube is allegedly the stronger, uh, machine compared to the PS2. So I figured this being two years, uh newer, coming out like two years after Metal Gear Solid 2 on stronger hardware, I thought this was going to look fan-fucking-tastic, but visually, it just does not have that Kojima polish. Uh, it could have been a better-looking game, I think. They also butcher the script, they take out the Muck Tuck contest line, the Muck Tuck eating contest line with uh, Vulcan Raven and Snake's uh, witty banter. It's okay. Um... I do not go back to this game very often. Uh, I, I dick around with it sometimes, but... Eh, I'm one of those fags. That just... Eh, the original's better. Um, this is the Metal Gear Solid 3 demo. It came out with, I think, the official PlayStation Magazine. Which I do have, and it has like a big layout, and I would consider part of my Metal Gear collection. But I'm not digging it out, because... Fuck, looking for it, it's somewhere in my closet under stacks and stacks of shit. Um, this is where I learned the, the Japanese for backpack is BAKPAKU! 
And you have to say it like as intense and guttural as possible because, I mean, they're fucking serious about backpacks and glorious Snip-on. Um, neat little thing in my collection. Um, let's see, what do we got here? Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. This was my first experience with GameStop. Um, I went in on the day it came out and I saw an open case on the shelf and it's like it's the first time I've been in GameStop so I assume they just had a display uh, case and I was like yeah I want to get Metal Gear Solid 3 and then they started putting the disc in that case and I was like uh what and they're like that'll be full price please and I was like uh what and it's like you don't have a shrink wrap they're like no it's like uh well fuck you lady then I walked out went to Walmart bought a shrink wrapped shrink wrapped copy and decided fuck GameStop uh, they're trying to sell an opened copy of the game, new, which if your filthy uh, employees put their greasy, nasty fucking hands, like, that lady could have been picking her nose, flicking the sniz, God knows what, scratching her ass, uh, who knows what the fuck she was doing before I waltzed in there looking for my Metal Gears, and she's going to put her filthy hands all over the disc, does this bitch even know how to handle an optical disc? Shit, she might have touched the shiny side, God, that irritates me when people do that. So I was like, fuck you, I'm going to Walmart, and then Walmart had it, and I started going to Walmart for my day one purchases, until I started buying, just buying new games online when they come out, because, you know, fuck all that. Um, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence Limited Edition, this is 30 bucks. Uh, my mom was going out to the store, and I was like, you know, I believe they only had it at GameStop, and I like was like, ugh, fuck GameStop, I ain't going in there ever again. So she picked it up for me, and she sent me a text message. She's like, they got two copies. Do you want me to pick up both of them since they're only 30 bucks? And I was like, oh, man, I would like to get another one to keep shrink wrapped and whatever, but fuck it, man. I'm not that type of guy. I want to let another Metal Gear fan get a hold of this game. And then a few years later, these were going for like 250 bucks online. I was like, fuck. Fuck that guy <laughs> that lives in my town and got this other copy for 30 bucks. I want I want 230 bucks, man. I want $200 of profit, but whatever. You live, you learn. And I considered it when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, limited edition, but, man, they printed enough copies of that, and uh, they're, like, fucking worthless. You can't give those things away. So, this is also not that good. This is the, uh, what's this, the persistent, what's the name of this disc? It's like... Disc 3 Existence, and it's like edited into a movie that you have to play on a PS2. I don't think it's a regular DVD. I think you have to play it on uh, the PS2. And uh, not that good. It's uh, just not not that good. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. It's got like um, a narrator, which I didn't like. I believe it has a narrator. I only looked at it once and I thought, not that good. Um, just watching the cutscenes edited on YouTube is the better experience. I keep the box separate and just keep these on the disc. This is also my first online game, uh, Metal Gear Online. I went over to my brother's house, played the shit out of it with my with his oldest kid, and uh, he was just fucking amused shitless by the uh, people using the cardboard box trick. He just thought that was the funniest shit. So on the way home from uh, that adventure of, you know, going to my brother's house, because he had a PS2 um, modem and I didn't. On the way home, I was like, Mom, you gotta stop at the store so I can get a PlayStation 2 modem. And then I played this nonstop for a week. I, I stopped eating, I stopped shitting and drinking, and I just did this for a fucking week! And uh, I got decent. I was, I was high up on the leaderboard for the sneaking mode. And then I got, that's when I got that first real grown-up job that was good, had like kick-ass health care and health insurance and all that shit. And then uh, on the first weekend back, coming back to it, uh, I got my shit wrecked. That one week was enough for me to lose all of my metal gearing abilities and just get my shit shoved in. Uh, this is the Essential Collection. It's got Miller Shod 1, 2, and 3. This is the first of the collections, and a lot of people are confused, they thought that this PS1 game would somehow magically save with a PS2 uh, memory card, and I remember a lot of people being really confused by that. Still in the shrink wrap, because I've got 30 billion copies of Metal Gear Solid 2. Jesus Christ. How many more copies of Metal Gear Solid 2 can one man have? 
there's some that I'm missing, like two, and I need them. <laughs> um, I used to have a complete North American Metal Gear collection. I'll get to that at the end of the video. Um, yeah, so there's that. Something I forgot with the last batch of stuff, Zone of the Enders, um, the first one, Zone of the Enders, it comes with a Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. So basically it was a paid demo for Metal Gear Solid that came with a free copy of Zone of the Enders. Um, lots of people got this. Uh, Crazy Chris, um, if you listen to the podcast enough, you've heard me talk about Crazy Chris, probably. He's this kid that I knew since like third grade, he lives next door to one of my friends, Matt, and uh, a couple years ago I got home from work and the news was on, and a young man on such and such street is in custody after attempting to stab his father a billion times, like holy shit, it's Chris. Then I went to Matt's house to confirm and holy shit, it was Chris! Um, like, not long before that, we went and saw those uh, Grindhouse movies that Tarantino made. Death Proof and the one where the bitch got a fucking machine gun for a leg. That one, that zombie movie. And uh, me and my, my dude aunt and Chris went and saw it in theaters. And not too long after that, he tried to stab up his father and, for all I know, is still in fucking prison. I don't know what happened to Chris. But, yeah, I forgot to mention this with the last batch, like all the PS2 era stuffage so this I didn't get back in the day um, this is just something I picked up inexpensively online a few years ago for my collection alright now this isn't really a part of my Metal Gear collection but it is because it's got a fucking Metal Gear in it this little this little fella right here is a Metal Gear Mark 2 let me yeah that's a it's a Metal Gear Mark 2 and he's got a little artificial intelligence, and he's cute as fuck, and he helps Gillian Seed solve the Snatcher Crisis. Uh, this is an amazing point-and-click game. It's uh, one of Hideo Kojima's bests. I did justify buying a complete copy of this by uh, rationalizing that it's part of my Metal Gear collection. So I mentioned in my last Metal Gear collection video that I wanted to pick this up and add it to the collection because of that. And I did, and I don't regret it because now... Uh, like three years later, this is almost doubled in price. So I'm glad I picked it up for 90 uh, bucks shipped when I did. There's one, well, there's two problems. There's this rip in the cover right here, or uh, on the manual, right there. And I'm too scared to try and remove it. There's this uh, barcode sticker, which... I don't want to try and get that off. I don't want to damage the disc in any way. I don't want to like scratch it on you know this side and fuck it up, or like heat it with something and fuck it up. So whatever. Two minor co cosmetic blemishes, not a big deal. Um, yeah, good luck finding one in this condition for ninety bucks now. At least uh, the last time it looks like maybe a month or two ago, and the prices were fucking retarded for this game. Uh, I didn't regret spending 90 but fuck man, this is a rare exception. I've never spent that much for a used game outside of this one particular instance. Because I'm a Metal Gear fan, because I'm a Kojima fan, um, and I'd already played the game twice on uh, CDR. And the legit copy actually plays better. It, uh, the burnt copies, no matter what you do, the uh, voice acting and the animation will uh, fall out of sync. Nah, it's not like a deal breaker, like the only way you can play the game is with a CDR, fucking do it, this is a good game. Or, uh, I'm not sure what emulation does, I don't know if it has the same problem. But, uh, amazing game, just glad to add it. It's got tons of Metal Gear references, one of the characters is a member of Foxhound, there's a club called Outer Heaven, uh, it's got a Metal Gear in it, so I was like, fuck it man, I gotta add this to my collection, so. Snatcha. Now, if you pre-ordered Metal Gear Solid 4, you got this. This is a DVD. It's Metal Gear Solid Saga 2. Um, this particular one was a gift to me from a listener on the podcast. And actually, let me dig this out. <laughs> um, this is a picture they drew of Sniper Wolf. At the time, I was talking about... There's a joke... Uh, I believe it was du Gooch, Gooch and the Douchebag, whose podcast I was on, and uh, they uh, 
We were talking about doing a Mondo boob cast and just talking about boobs and video games as a joke. And uh, someone drew this and sent it in. Who was it? Um, Pie Lover. Sorry, man, for forgetting you like that. That's shitty. So they sent me in a, an extra copy of this. And uh, this is the one that I got gifted, I believe. Because if someone gives me a gift, I fucking keep it. So since I had two of these, I gave them to a friend because they gave me... Uh, Calorie Mate. They bought one of these, or two of these, for their uh, Metal Gear collection. They asked me if I wanted one. I was like, well, fuck yeah, I want a Calorie Mate from Metal Gear collection. So, to return the favor, I gave them a copy of Metal Gear Solid Saga, or Metal Gear Saga Volume 2, and one of these Yu-Gi-Oh cards, which has a Metal Gear reference. This is Tactical Espionage Expert. It's a Konami game, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is. So this is a reference to Metal Gear. He's got this weird little dildo gun. I don't know what that's about. So these were cheap, so I bought three of them. And I gave uh, one away and my uh, spare copy of this. Now, when you got this pre-order, you got to beta test um, Metal Gear Online, which was alright. So I played the shit out of that for a month. Um, ooh. Now, when I got Metal Gear Solid 4... Uh, I had planned it so that the day it came out, I got my wisdom teeth taken out, so I had an excuse not to talk to anybody. I had a, I believe I set it up so I had a four-day weekend. I took two days off of it, so I just ate fucking painkillers and played Metal Gear for four days, and it was a lovely time. Like I said, these have retained no value at all. <laughs> kind of regret paying 90 bucks for it. Kind of. Um, it comes with the soundtrack. I keep the game separate so they don't have to keep opening this up. This just sits somewhere. And, uh, so there's, uh, this box art is fucking hideous. I don't know why around 2009 there became a trend of, uh, these hideous, just close-up faces of dudes. Like, whoever thought that was a good choice as an asshole. Metal Gear Solid HD Collection for the PS3. Uh, Fucking lovely, lovely, lovely game. I'm working on getting all the plat. I'm working on getting the platinum trophy for Metal Gear Solid 2. I have the platinum trophy for these two. Um, actually, Metal Gear Solid 4 has a trophy patch out. I mean, I'm sure you know if you're a Metal Gear fan. And uh, I guess I'm gonna platinum this game this year. I've been trying to track down the exact date for the events of Metal Gear Solid 4 because I've played the uh, Metal Gear Solid, which happened in 2005 in late February. I played that as close to the day as possible that it happened. Uh, both chapters of Metal Gear Solid 2, which occur... I forget the exact dates off the top of my head. I believe the second, the uh, plant chapter is April 29th and 30th, 2009. And I forget the month that the tanker chapter happens, but I believe it's... I think it's like maybe August 7th. Off the top of my head. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, don't correct me. It's really unimportant. But the actual dates that these did happen... I had them marked on my calendar. I played them as close to the correct time as possible for Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2. I wanted to do it for Metal Gear Solid 4, but uh, nobody fucking knows beyond 2014. So I guess this year I'm just going to try to platinum this as well, which includes getting a big boss rank, which I've never gone out of my way to do. But I've got the platinum for Peace Walker and uh, Metal Gear Solid 3. Metal Gear Solid 3 is real easy to get a platinum. That's I think it's an easy platinum. Um, Metal Gear Solid 2, on the other hand, you have to complete all the VR missions, so it's, uh, it's not that it's particularly difficult, it's just that it's a real time sink. And I wanted to complete the VR missions anyway, so having the extra incentive is nice. Uh, Peace Walker, this is the preferred way to play it on, uh, I believe you can download these separately on Xbox Live and PSN, so that's, that's the preferred way to play it. Um... But being able to, like, the better online. Co-op makes Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. It's best played with bros. Uh, Co-op sneaking. It makes up for the fact that the AI is, like, genome soldier retarded. And um, fucking lovely. Highly recommended to anyone looking to get into the Metal Gear uh, Solid universe. Um, there's also the Essential Collection if you're a PS3 owner. That... Maybe something you want to look into. Now, I've got the limited edition for Metal Gear Solid Rising, or Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Uh, it comes with two cases. You got the steel case, 
which I'm not using. I just have this set to the side somewhere. But it looks pretty, pretty fucking sweet. Um, who knows how that says? I don't know, Moon. Uh, I use this case because it, you know, sits with my regular collection. I don't know why it's why it came like that. But, ugh, limited edition. I don't really want to, uh, well, fuck it. I guess I will. Let me dismount my camera from my tripod. Um, I've got this, uh, big lightning lamp thing. Um, I don't want to take it out and set it up. Maybe I will later at the end of the video or something. But it came packaged in this big, badass box. And uh, I keep it in there, protected in its foam coffin, because, you know, I don't really want to, like, use it. But, uh, yes, that's that pretty, you know, there's, there's this stuff. So, uh, let's continue. Alright, next up, we have Metal Gear Solid Digital Graphic Novel. Um, it exists. We have Metal Gear Acid, which I played to the first boss and I was really enjoying it, but then I couldn't get past the first boss, so I stopped enjoying it. I do want to start it over and uh, give it another fair shake, though. We have Metal Gear Acid 2. Haven't started it yet because I if I haven't beaten the first game. I'm not going to play the second game. That's just how I am. Um, Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. If you have a save from Metal Gear Acid 1 and 2, you uh, can unlock the female characters in this game as part of your squad, which I did start up a save on it, which I didn't play it, but I did that just to unlock the character. Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops Plus, um, it's got like randomly generated missions and you can play online and that's all it is. There's no story mode to this. I believe there was a cameo with Old Snake. This came out right before Metal Gear Solid 4, so Old Snake's in it. I believe Raiden's in it. Um, yeah, on the back it's got a picture of an Old Snake on there. Uh, I dicked around with it a little bit. Not much. Um... This is a pre-order bonus from GameStop. It's PSP armor that like snaps onto your um, original PSP. It's just gray and it says Metal Gear Solid on it. Uh, I bought this on eBay. I did not pre-order Portable Ops because seriously, fuck GameStop. And that instance, it worked out really well. I got this for like ten bucks, and uh, it was worth it to not walk into or deal with fucking GameStop. This is Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. I put about seventy hours on this. I never completed it. I put way more time into the HD collection version. I did get the limited edition of that, and uh, I dealt with GameStop Online, which I hate doing it. I hate giving them money, but my fucking Metal Gear collection, man. It's got a big yellow folder with like information about the game, and uh, it's also got a bandana that's pretty cool. And... Uh, that crap is in here and I don't want to take it out. <laughs> Trust me, it's in here! So there's all of my Metal Gear PSP stuff. This is Metal Gear Solid Risk. This is the limited edition Yoji Shinkawa packaging variant. It's only 1014, I believe the 1015th was given away as a prize. Um, the servers were slammed to shit when I ordered this. Still in the shrink wrap, I don't know anyone that plays board games. I don't know anyone that plays video games. I sure as shit don't know anybody that's willing to play Risk. So there's no reason to unbox it. If I ever did find someone willing to play this with me, I would just buy the regular uh, edition. Because it's cheaper, and I wouldn't feel bad opening it knowing that there's only a thousand of these. So I have this. It sits on display. It's one of the two things that... I have that I've never opened and used. Typically, I uh, even the variant copies of shit, I will open up and play it at least once or twice just because I enjoy the game, and if I got it, fuck it, I'm going to play it. But, uh, yeah, so this exists, and I have it, and it's pretty neat. This is the Metal Gear Solid novel. It's part of the Worlds of Power series. Nintendo started releasing novelized versions of popular video games. This is awful. 
Um, when Solid Snake's infiltrating Metal Gear, he rolls around in panther piss and crawls around on all fours to distract a big jungle cat. Terrible book. <laughs> um, this is the Raymond Benson novelization of Metal Gear Solid. Guess what? It's also an awful book. Um, there's, I forget what the exact line is, but Solid Snake sneaks up behind a guard and he's like, Christmas came early, surprise, and then punches him in the face and knocks him out. It's retarded. It's retarded as shit. Um, Metal Gear Solid 2, also by Raymond Benson. Haven't read it because I haven't finished the first one, and uh, it's in my collection. There is a novelization of Metal Gear Solid 4 that was written by a Japanese fan, I believe. I may pick that up someday. I, well, if I may, I, I will when I have bucks for it. Um, I forgot to mention that I have Metal Gear Solid Touch on the iPod Touch, but, I mean, do you really want to look at the icon on my iPod? Um, because I'm not showing it to you. This is the hardcover collection of the Metal Gear Solid comics. Um, I'm not really a big fan of Ashley Wood's art style. I just, I don't think it's good for sequential art. Now, some of the covers are real fucking slick. Like, look at Revolver Ocelot there. Barely looks like Revolver Ocelot, but that's a pretty cool fucking picture. Uh, look at Vulcan Raven and uh, Gray Fox. Like, these are cool single pieces of artwork, but is sequential art for a comic book eh, just not that big of a fan. I believe this is the cover gallery. Look, look how slutty Sniper Wolf is. Jesus Christ. It's fucking Alaska. You got half your body exposed. Skank, cover it up. Jesus. Same goes for Liquid Snake. Put a fucking shirt on. It's Alaska and it's cold. It's February Alaska, too, at that. Um, fucking cool Metal Gear picture. Um, yeah, so, like, as individual pieces of art, it's okay, but as sequential art, mm, yeah. Um, this is the novelization of Metal Gear Solid, or the comic book adaptation of Metal Gear Solid 2. I don't think I've ever actually read through these. Um, it's got one of these fancy bookmarks built in. Ugh. This, uh, like, clothy material, whatever the fuck this is, built in. That's classy. Classy as shit. Again, still not a huge fan of the guy's artwork, but what are you gonna do? Alright, this is my Metal Gear Solid uh, official mission handbook. Um, it's a little beat up, but the reason I got it, um, the interviews are really cool, but there is, well, let me see if I can find this real quick, there are uh, biographies for all of the characters. Now, the official backstory, now this is using the series Bible from when Metal Gear Solid came out, which, uh, you know, was when Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2 Solid, Snake and Metal Gear Solid were all canonical, um, before they completely rewrote Big Boss. This uh, goes into everything he did throughout the 60s. Uh, this is before he's been, you know, Big Boss has spent more time in comas than out of comas. Uh, <laughs> uh, the new Metal Gear Solid 5 has a 10-year coma for no fucking reason. Uh, I don't know why they keep dicking around the character worse and worse and worse. They really, they really didn't have to. Um, there's no reason they couldn't have made Metal Gear Solid 3 and have him just be about 10 to 15 years older. Uh... There, there, there really wasn't any reason to do that, but they did, because Herder fucked the canon. But I use this as information to write an article, and uh, you can probably find a PDF of this somewhere if you're interested in Big Boss's official uh, backstory up until Metal Gear Solid 2. So this is an interesting piece of my collection. That it's really cool to flip through. The interviews are really nice. Uh, you know, yeah, if you find a PDF of it, it's worth looking through. Or, you know, you can find a copy on eBay for not too much money. Um, this is Zone of Enders HD collection. 
Uh, it has a Metal Gear Rising demo, which I played about a billion times. Um, this was the shitty version when it came out, but I was like, oh no, fuck you, I'm getting, getting the PS3 version, because I want the PS3 version, trophies, all that, I just prefer the PS3 version. And uh, Zone of the Enders always played great, but um, I hadn't started, uh, well I hadn't gotten far into Zone of the Enders 2. And apparently there's frame rate issues that people just shitted on it so hard that this sold like dick because everybody complained about it. And the 360 version was supposed to be better. Most people still said if you want to play Zone of the Enders 2, get the PS2 version. But there's a, like, 500 megabyte patch uh, that released, you know, not that long, a while ago, I guess. That completely fixes it, and now this is the preferred version. So it looks like I made the correct choice in the long run. Um... You know, I did also want to play these two games, but I did get it as part of my Metal Gear collection. Now, these last few games um, have cameos. This has Solid Snake in it, which is one of the biggest reasons I got it, because I've never been a big Smash Brothers fan. And like I said, I don't have any friends that really play video games. There's no one to really play this with, which is kind of the point. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I got the 360 version because it's cheaper at the time. I'll probably end up getting the PS3 version eventually as well. Uh, there is an unlockable... I don't know how you get it exactly off the top of my head. But there's a Metal Gear Solid 4 Raiden skin that you can unlock. And uh, Konami Crazy Carts. Which they totally... Or Crazy Racers. Uh, if it was Crazy Carts, Konami's Crazy Carts, uh, that would be unfortunate figure it out yourself. Um, Gray Fox is a playable character in that game. Now, there are other games with uh, Metal Gear cameos and uh, stuff that I need to round out my uh, collection, but oh, I'll get to that at the end of the video. Alright, and the last thing I really have to show off are my Metal Gear um, action figures. I believe somebody opened up this writing because the blister pack is stapled on, or perhaps the glue just became weak, but, I mean, eh, whatever. Um, I guess I could take this figure out and put it back since it's already... I think the glue just came off, or maybe maybe someone did fuck with it, I don't know. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 writing. Uh, look at this sexy big boss figure. Now, all these figures I kept in the packaging, so they're not particularly posable. So there's really uh, no reason, you know? Uh, I think they look just as nice hanging on a wall in their packaging as they would out of their packaging, losing all their tiny accessories and shit. So I just, I go ahead and uh, keep these, you know, in the packaging and on the wall. Um, got a vamp. Now, I don't have the complete line, like, um, out of this, you know, Metal Gear Solid Collection 2, I'm, uh, missing Crouching Old Snake and the boss. I just didn't think they were very sexy figures, so I really didn't, uh, feel any big need to get them. And out of the 20th Anniversary Collection, I'm missing, uh, Old Snake with the Octo Camo Mask and Old Snake without the Octo Camo Mask, which... Again, I didn't think they were very cool figures, because I think uh, Old Snake kind of looks like shit with his cheesy porno stash. Um, looks like a fucking weirdo. And the coolest figure out of uh, these collections, I seem to have misplaced. Here it is. The uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, Ninja Raiden figure, which I think is really cool looking. Um kind of wish I had two of these so I could take this one out of the packaging and like put them on my PC case or something. I think this is a really cool figure. But the coolest figure out of all of them is my uh, Revoltech Raiden. There's his packaging. Um, you saw him at the beginning of the video. He's super poseable. Uh, he's got a sweet sword that comes out of the sheath and uh, this is a birthday present that I got like last week and eventually I like I might make a video talking about him in depth looking at all his accessories and all his swappable pieces like uh, his hair right here and his battle visor comes off 
and then on his ears, uh, in the game, when the battle visor retracts, it's like, goes to the side of his head, there's like snap-on pieces, and when I was first sticking around with this, uh, like, two seconds out of the box, I dropped one, it's like, fuck, where'd it go? And then I had to find it, because it's like super tiny. And then I noticed the other one was already missing, so that one had luckily just fallen on my desk. So that's why I'm probably going to keep the uh, battle visor on, if I do have this figure out of the packaging. But, uh, Revoltex packaging is made so that you can put them back in their uh, display case. There's a little plastic box that uh, you can put all of the accessories in, which I think is pretty nice of them to give you. Because there's a shitload. There's like a thousand different hands for various poses. Uh, hands that hold the sword, hands that have cool poses like this. Um, it's an extremely uh, highly articulate figure. And uh, you can do a lot of cool shit with them. He's got like a little base to stand him on. There's even a little paper craft cardboard box that you can put together so he can hide under that. And uh, very cool figure. I might make a video dedicated just to this, do like a figure review, something I don't really do. But this figure warrants it, and it's probably uh, one of the coolest things in my Metal Gear collection. Right now. I'm just really pumped to have it because. Uh, the other Revolt Tech figures, like the Snake figure, I think looks like shit. But because Raiden is a cyborg, the joints don't look that uh, wild or out of place. And uh, it looks really cool. Now he has a swappable eye. You can pop his eye out and it comes with a little plastic piece so you can pose it. Let me, uh, like I said, I should probably just do a separate video. But he's got red and blue eyes. And uh, I like the red eyes because... Fucking ripper mode, man. It's time for Jack to let her rip. But I, I may or may not make a more in-depth video. There's already people that got a bajillion clicks or views for their uh, ride-in figure reviews. But that is everything I have in my Metal Gear collection. Now, um, I've had this checklist that I've been uh, checking things off as I go for my Metal uh, Gear collection, which... Because of my, my autisms, I gotta check it off right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Get this done. Oh, uh, the completion, man. The completion I feel for having talked about everything in my Metal Gear collection. Um, I'm, I typed up this huge list and I sat down to talk about it and I forgot like uh, two things that I had to write in here. Which, uh, you know, whatever. But there's stuff that I need in my Metal Gear collection. So, in the last one, I mentioned a couple things that I needed, which I have picked up. And, uh,. For a while, for a brief period, like two years ago, I had every North American Metal Gear game except for the cell phone game, Metal Gear Solid Mobile. Um, which I still need, you know, I will never add that to my collection. I think you had to have, like, a certain cell phone provider, and I don't think you can get it anymore. Uh, maybe you can emulate it, I don't know. If you know anything about Metal Gear Solid Mobile and how you can emulate it, uh, shoot me a PM, I'm interested. Um... Actually, there's something I forgot to write here on my left. Uh, um, uh, 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 Alright. So, stuff that I still need so I can uh, once again reclaim my complete North American Metal Gear Solid collection. Uh, Metal Gear Solid HD for the 360, Zone of the Enders HD for the 360, Metal Gear Rising for the 360, Metal Gear Rising for the PS3, uh, Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection, Metal Gear Solid 3D for the 3DS, Metal Gear Solid 2 for the, uh, or Metal Gear Solid HD for the Vita. Uh, those are the main things I need. And again, this really pisses me off. Metal Gear Solid 5's coming out. Um, what is it? Ground Zeroes, or whatever. It's split into two chapters, and the first one's coming out, like, early sometime this year, I believe. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be on PS3, 360, and then X Boner and PS4, which... You know, fuck you for all these, like, variants. It used to be so much easier to collect Metal Gear shit when it was primarily on PlayStation hardware. Um, then there's a bunch of stuff with cameos that I'd like to pick up. Uh, Ape Escape 3 has a Metal Gear Solid 3 crossover. New International Track and Field has uh, Solid Snake in it. Dream Mix TV World Fighters. Dude, you have no idea how badly I want to make uh, Solid Snake beat the shit out of Bomberman and Optimus Prime. And vice versa, honestly, because I really like Bomberman too. 
Uh, Boktai 2 Solar Boy Django has some Metal Gear references. Um, I'm also missing Metal Gear Saga Volume 1 I would like to have, but it's way too expensive, so I'm never going to buy that shit. And uh, Metal Gear on the Commodore 64. It's been real hard tracking information on that. I'm not sure if it was released in America, because uh, typically it's the North American collection I'm going for. Although I do have some, some import shit, but it's mostly American stuff that I'm after. Um, like this Revoltec figure is an import, and Metal Gear Solid Integral is an import. But mostly I'm going for complete North American stuff. So mostly I'm just missing variants. Um, stuff that I don't typically need someday when I get like just when I have uh, cash I really don't give a shit about. You know, I'll pick up a 3DS copy for a couple of bucks. Uh, you know, shit like that. Like I don't have a Vita or a 3DS yet, but I'll pick those up when they're cheap. And then someday I will have the hardware. Uh, Legacy Collection is actually at the like top of my pri priority list because it has Metal Gear Solid Digital Graphic Novel 2, which has voice acting and is a unique thing to that collection that was not released uh, independently. You can only get that in the uh, collection, so I do kind of want that. Um, I'm probably going to get it after the download redeem codes for uh, the download of Metal Gear Solid and uh, VR missions have expired, but whatever. I've got multiple copies of all that shit anyway. So anyway, that's my Metal Gear Solid uh, collection. I hope uh, the Metal Gear fans that have found their way to it were interested in it. And uh, thanks for watching.